Hi, I'm Angie Osgathorpe. I'm the president of the Davis Chamber, and I am here with Chris Williams, who is the what? The director of communications and operations at the Davis School District. That's right. So, and Chris and I go way back, huh? board meetings in Moab and things like that. And I am on the Davis School, um, Davis Education Foundation, the board of directors. And I just love that all the things that they get to do and all the wonderful things that ways that get to to help the kids. So, but I have a question, a couple questions for you, okay, okay Chris? Okay. How you find time to be on our Education Foundation board, I don't know, but we're glad to have you. <laughs> it is a wonderful, it's my, well, I can't say it's my favorite board, but it kind of is. <laughs> okay, question for you. What makes the Davis School District unique? Oh, gosh. How much time do you right? have? Right, exactly. Um, we are the only accredited K-12 public education system in Utah, which in, in some people's mind, what, what does that mean? Well, just imagine... You're going into a doctor's office, the first thing you look at when you're waiting is, where are these certificates? Where do you go to school? Where did she go to school? What sort of training does he or she have? Well, we're accredited by an organization that basically says, the Davis School District meets our standards, and wow. we're the only school district in this state who has that. K-12, it used to be just high schools, but no, this is, Kindergarten through 12th grade, we are, we are accredited. So that should speak volumes to yeah, people impressive. who are concerned about, is Davis School District legitimate? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's the question. Definitely <laughs> legitimate, definitely awesome. That's great. What, uh, what else about? We also have a 95% graduation rate. That's pretty dang Lighting good. High School has a 97% graduation rate. That's just crazy. That's so, just crazy good. Well, it's it's... It is phenomenal. We're yeah. proud of it, and we want every student to succeed and graduate. Uh, we have awesome teachers, but that doesn't happen without parents yeah. having a personal relationship and really working hard with their students so that they can meet those requirements to graduate. So uh, we, we live in a great area. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. And Chris, I have another question for you. I want to get back to that idea of parents and right. their role in kids um, and their in their education so how really from your standpoint how important is it for parents to be involved I know it's important but how important is it for them to be involved with their kids teachers and then what's the best way for them to do that yeah, yeah. oh that's critical I get phone calls from across the country people saying we're I'm considering moving into Davis County what are your best schools? And I say, well, I'm the PR guy for the school district, right? <laughs> yeah, they're all good, right? <laughs> they, they, they are all good. Uh, but it really comes down to where they can afford to live. It's, it's no use living on the East Bench if you can't make ends meet right. in that area. So first off, live where you can afford. Secondly, go to parent-teacher conference. Yeah. Back to school night, have a relationship with, the, with your child's teacher. If you establish that relationship, it's gonna be a fantastic school no matter where they go because you have that rapport. If you go to back to school night, like I always did, uh, I was able to come home and say, that is a fantastic math teacher. I know a little bit more information then when my kiddo says, <laughs> uh, Hey, that teacher's not fair, that teacher's <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Or deadlines or what have you, but homework, and I can sit there and say, you know what, what I learned from your teacher is this and this, mm -hmm. and that teacher is fantastic. So I back the teacher. Yeah, I back my kiddo, but I also have a relationship, and I know what's going on in the classroom so that there's that rapport. And if there's an issue going on, I could email the teacher, and the teacher will get back to me because that relationship has been established. I'm just not some, some person sending in an email right. that doesn't have a name or a face. Yeah. So I think yeah. that goes a long way. And I've, I haven't had anyone argue that point uh, in any conversation I've had, either on the phone or in person. People believe that, and it, they find it to be true. If you establish a relationship with your child's teacher, it's going to be a great school. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I've always told my kids, teachers care if you care, right? No doubt Parents about it. and students. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, great, great advice. Thank you. Uh, Chris, you've also um, talked to me about the importance of people getting to know their school board members yeah. and, and voting and all of that. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, we spend a lot of time you know, looking at national politics, and we think that really has an impact on our lives. Really, when it comes down to it, our, 
local school board, our local city council, the county commission has more of an effect on our lives. So I'm always amazed and I've done, I've been in school PR for 24 years. A while. Huh? Okay? I think I've attended more school board meetings than anyone in this district. And that's okay. It, it, right, they're not right. forcing me to attend school board meetings. It's just part of my job. But I'm always amazed at how few times people come out to a school board meeting. And I always say the meetings are open. Mm -hmm. Do you know who your school board member is? If you don't know who your school board member is, hop online. Find out how to contact them. Find out what they look like. Find out what, what motivates them. Have conversations with them. Call them on the phone. Email them. Come to a school board meeting. Have a conversation with them. Get to know who these people are. They're fantastic people and, and they're excited about education. But if you really want to have that part of your life, uh, let me back that up. If you really want to know what how your life is being affected on a school level, you have to know who's involved in the process. And the school board member is definitely one of those people that you need to know. These are people that run for election every four years, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't just just, just <laughs> pick a name. You, just, you should know who these people are. Know what they stand for. Yeah, because yeah, they really do affect more than we think they do, right? No, no doubt about it. Very good. You know, we do have 90 schools in our school district, and they're not overseeing every little aspect of what's happening in each of those schools, but they play a big role. They're elected, and they oversee the financial um, aspects of the school district. We have a big budget, and why not? Why not know who these people exactly. are? They're fantastic, and yeah. it's, it's good to, to yeah. get involved. And we should always exercise our right to vote, right? No question about <laughs> Very yeah. good. Yeah. And Chris, you know what other question I have to ask you. <laughs> what is your favorite thing about the Davis Chamber of Commerce? Wow. You know, years ago I worked for a superintendent by the name of Daryl White, mm. and he told me a story of uh, a friend that he had who was a beet farmer. Sure, he farmed sugar beets, and he said to him, you know, one of the problems with you educators is you only think about education. <laughs> so what I love about the Chamber is I get to go to the meetings and I get to hear from bankers I get to hear from bakers, I get to hear from legislators, I get to hear from a whole cross-section of people. And there hasn't been one meeting, and I've been involved with the Chamber for years, I've sat on the Executive Committee, uh, there hasn't been one meeting in which I've walked away thinking, that was a total waste of time. I have learned in every meeting I've attended, and I've been just uh, grateful that I have this opportunity to get to know other people in other walks of life, mm -hmm. because these people are important in my life as well. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if they're selling cars or they're a dentist. These people are part of are my life and part of what Davis County is all about. So when I go to meetings, I'm always learning fantastic stuff. And I get to share that information with other people I come in contact with. Yeah, very good. We like that you're an advocate for the chamber. And, and now more than ever, business and education has to go hand in hand, right? Oh, we no need question. to do that to go, go forward for our workforce, for our quality of life and everything like that. So. Yeah, yeah, the chamber has been always supportive of what we're doing in our schools. Absolutely. And uh, without, that, without that effort, without people in Davis County continually talking about all the great things happening, whether it be in schools, whether it be in a business, whether it be road construction. If we're not talking up Davis County, then we're just shooting ourselves in the foot. We have to be the cheerleaders of Davis County. Absolutely. No right. other, no one else is going to cheer for us. Right, right. Let's, let's stand up. Right? <laughs> let's keep the money, let's keep the resources, and let's keep the kids and the workforce in Davis County, right? No, no question. Very good. Yeah.